welcome in. It is it's Christmas weekend, basically, yeah. as you guys are listening to this. Crazy. Yeah, I can't believe Christmas is here already. I just the last part of this year has flown by as it usually does, but happy to be here. Played some I I I said this before on the podcast. I end up playing more disc golf in the winter than I do any other time, it seems like. I don't I don't know why. Maybe just stuff slowed down a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. That's that is crazy because I feel like I almost try to do the exact opposite. Uh, I'll, mm. I'll like still work on things and things like that because off season and you're not playing tournaments. Usually I'm not playing as many rounds, so I get the chance to work on more stuff. But that is like I tried to do a disc comparison yesterday and even star plastic. Like it was so cold for me that star mm. plastic was just slippery. So yeah. What am I doing out here, guys? I'm ha- I am having that issue that with my Eclipse Envies, which everyone knows I love. I'm having to switch them out for base plastic because they're just slipping out of my hand like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've got a Eclipse reactor that I felt the same thing. I was like, uh, that, nope, can't can't throw that on forehand right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Uh, backhand, it's fine. It's just it's that forehand, that smaller point of contact definitely comes into mm-hmm. play. Uh, but we know that Eclipse plastic is pretty popular thanks to one of our presenting sponsors, Disc RPM. I it's such a fun they just continue to add more and more features as we are evolving. They are evolving with us. It's been kind mm-hmm. of fun. Uh, disc RPM doesn't exist just because of us, but I feel like we're, we, it's a, it's a cool moment, Brad, to have mm-hmm. influence on how the platform is developing. So some features that have been added recently that you guys may not have seen. And part of what's going to help us is, we're looking through disc RPM in order to see people that are in the, in the bag community um, and a chance to, find our guests but they've added a feature not only can you add in your bag and pictures of your bag that's super cool two other features i want to highlight real fast that they've added are first they've added distances so mm-hmm. in your profile you can say how far basically some of the similar questions we've been asking for the application to come on in the bag so that as i'm going through looking for guests we can say, oh, okay, that's a very interesting bag. I wonder how far they throw. And then that information is right there. So if you're listening, you're in the in the bag community, make sure you go back into your profile and update that information. And then the other is you basically have your own personal Robbie C and ABB now because mm-hmm. if you have a spot or a gap in your bag, there's a new suggested disc feature um that you can use that will allow you to you can choose from like popular discs that are out there or discs that are just in the in in the back community that fill a similar Mm -hmm. slot to that so i thought that was super interesting yeah very cool i love all the stats i love the tools and again as always the thing that drew me in and immediately was i love seeing everyone's actual discs so it's truly free we're over 500 members so we're going to do a giveaway um and we'll, we'll figure it out. Stick around for the end of the episode. We will have uh, the giveaway details in our um, our exit, our sign off. And I guess in the meantime, thank you, Disc RPM, for all the amazing work you're doing. It makes our life easier in the bag. Hopefully it makes your all's life easier and more fun being able to see your collection and others. So um, speaking of really cool discs, our guest this, today is a disc dyer, and he's actually yeah. local. He's a friend. So... A uh, friend of mine, friend of foundations, friend of the local disc golf scene here. Um, very happy to have him. It's a different episode because, you know, we do a lot with beginners or people that have played about the same time as me, Robbie. But I know Gordon's been playing for quite some time. And just to prove that, you know, there are things you can continue to work on and continue to fine tune about your bag. And and he does a lot of disc dying and he has a lot of cool disc in his bag. Yeah. Excited to check him out. Let's bring him in. Welcome into In the Bag. Gordon, how you doing today, sir? Doing good, doing good, Robbie. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, stoked to be on. So, yeah, good to be here. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's great. We'll give Gordon a, t- a chance to tag himself or plug some of his stuff at the end of the episode. But he does a podcast, not a disc golf podcast, but a, 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 a Jets based podcast, I believe, right? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, is that smooth? Like the football or the football, not the hockey, not the Winnipeg Jets. Um, okay. So, yeah, the New York Jets football. So, it's a sad life for me, but you know what? We uh, we have a good time doing it. So yeah. So the yeah. crispy audio, the crispy video. You can thank his Jets podcast for that. <laughs> That's, right. I love That's it. right. I love it. As a Vikings fan, I I subconsciously have to dislike the Jets because of the association with the devil himself but that's okay we move past it so uh let's talk disc golf we want people to get to know you Gordon we kind of teased it in our intro but let's start off how long have you been playing uh, I've been playing 
I want to say for about 15, 16 years now, um, oh, probably a good little while now, you know, I like to say that I've only been like seriously playing for the last, you know, like tournaments and things like that for the last seven years. I mean, it's still a while, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I've been playing for, you know, I grew up in Northern New Jersey, so, um, played a lot in Warwick, New York, which is a big, um, there's a Warwick championships every year. And then that's where Steve Brinster is from. So some decent courses up in that area. Um, but again, back then it was one disc going out and playing nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, and then once I graduated college, kind of, kind of really wanted some more competition, uh, and just kind of started playing some tournaments. So I love it. That is awesome. I, I love it. There's just two different generations and hearing like, the length of time looking at your bag, a lot of dots are going to start being connected here, guys. So I am, I'm excited to kind of work through that. Yes, sir. As we continue. Um, so if we put you in a field and we were like, all right, Gordon, you got to throw, uh, to a basket controlled golf line, not once with a tailwind downhill. And I tripped and that momentum helped me as well. I once got a disc here, yeah. uh, how far are we throwing backhand and forehand backhand controlled at a basket um backhand maybe three three fifty probably like consistently i would say okay um i mean i could probably push it a little bit more but it gets a little squirrely after that uh forehand i gotta be honest maybe 150 200 feet maybe maybe okay um forehand is something that like i have only developed within the last two years maybe may like started and really only started using in the last year out on the course so that is fascinating especially yeah. as i'm looking at your bag i have forehand friendly discs i suppose you know so yeah well i'm just like uh, i'm yeah i'm gonna have so many questions here as we go through <laughs> because i like yeah we'll get there we'll get there so <laughs> very fascinating especially because um are you you're in the lynchburg area now yeah yep yeah so i grew up in northern new jersey um moved down here in about 2009 and been here been here ever since so okay awesome i i transplanted to my city in about 2000 in 2010 so and been there okay. ever since so i our disc golf journeys feel very very similar uh our frisbee <laughs> journeys in terms of yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for this, uh, putting, we put you on the putting green and we're like, yes, all right, sir. Gordon, you got 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25 and 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making in each station? Hmm. 15 feet. I'd like to say 10 out of 10. Right. But I mean, I'll, okay. I'll probably go nine out of 10 just for, just for, uh, for skits and gigs there. And then let's see, um, 25 feet probably drop down to like, maybe five, six, just because, you know, it's a squirrely distance okay. and 40 feet. I'm going to be honest, probably two, if I'm lucky, Okay, probably two, if I'm lucky, I used to do the, um, perfect putt, right? The app. So I would have yeah. that. And, and mm. there was a time where I was banging those 30 footers, never really went back to 40, but, um, yeah, 40 footers are tough for me. I'm, I'm step putt is a little, you know, it's either too high or just to the right or something like that. So. Yeah. And all it takes is one step up where you miss big and suddenly that puck gets real bad for the rest of the round. Cause you're like, like, all right, I you, don't you want to know. You, you hit the first one. You're feeling good though. You know? So that's true. That it's a double edged sword for sure. Um, all right. Final question for like getting to know your game. Gordon is always, yep. what would you say is the biggest strength of your game? Hmm. Anheuser approach shots. Backhand yeah. Anheuser approach shots for me. Um, I, I don't know if it's just, you know, I grew up through in a lid with my cousin in the backyard. We would, we would play a game where we just would throw back and forth and try and catch it and like see how many times we could throw and catch without the disc, uh, without the lid hitting the ground. And we'd get up in the hundreds, two hundreds. And um, I just, we would throw, throw all different types of shots and um, backhand Anheuser's for some reason. I just, I, it feels right to me. So. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I, when you said Anheuser at first, I was like, so this man doesn't have a forehand, but he throws Anheuser forehand approach it. But backhand Anheuser, I think, is an even spicier take because forehand yeah. Annie's, I feel like a lot of people try to embrace that that life. And then they're like, I don't have a forehand. Yeah, well, I can tell you exactly why that's the case. But 
uh, <laughs> and hides her backhands. Okay, that well, that will open up other conversations as well. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited about this. Um, Gordon, you have a very beautiful bag. I oh, love the dyes. Um, we'll end up talking about those all throughout. Uh, and I know you recently helped out with the foundation video. Yes, doing I did. the Uno, the Uno, the Uno cards. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, that was a fun video. That was that was great. It was fun dying those up. It was like cool, very cool concept. Putting them on, putting them on there. Um, so yeah, I was very happy to help and glad to see the reception was so good for it. So yeah. Yeah, and if those of you don't know, Gordon does a bunch of dyes, uh, rad dad dyes. We'll just let you shout that out at the end. But he also, pretty much any of the dyes that you see for sale in the foundation retail store here in Lynchburg or even sometimes online, Gordon is primarily the dyer of those discs. Yes, sir. Come on. Well, <laughs> Gordon, looking at your bag, man, um, links, putting yeah. with links, it looks Putin like. Yep. Uh, but you also have embraced the link as a throwing putter as well. Yeah. So the, um, used to always, I'm a beaded putter guy, love beaded putters. Um, used to putt with, I mean, the, the evolution of my putter has, has gone through a lot. Uh, used to putt with, started out with wizards. So yeah. obviously, you know, the beaded putter, right? The wizard is the beaded putter, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. started out with wizards, then moved to avier drivers for a while okay. and putted with avier drivers. Um, so my, putting philosophy is like, I like to try to find a putter I can putt with a putter. I can throw some shorter approach shots with, um, and then a put, like just something that I feel comfortable in a few different molds. So the avier driver was star plastic. Um, I have a champion one. Um, and then, you know, obviously the DX avier drivers, and then it moved to P one X. And then now I've, I've settled on links for, I've been putting with the link for probably three years now. So. Okay. Has the P1X made its way to new Innova yet? Or not, new new discra- or Dismania yet? Wow, that was hard to get yet. to. Uh-uh. Not yet. They just released the P3X, the brand new P3X in the mystery boxes this past year, um, which oh, I got. I mean, I didn't buy two mystery boxes, but I got two P3Xs because the P3X I've, I've loved ever since. Um, but the P1X, no, not yet. I believe P1X came out, I think the Arrow for Innova. Or the um, not the arrow. No, there was a newer, uh, newer end of a mold that I believe was is the mold of the P one X. So okay, interesting. Because yeah, that's uh, zero. Is it the zero? zero that's yeah. it. That's okay. it. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, there was some weird one that came out with it. Everyone was like, why did you just drop this random putt? Okay. Yeah. Um, because I have a friend who started playing around the same time as me and then quit. Like, quit playing regularly for after about five years of us playing and we started in 2012. Okay. Um, and so he puts with P one X's and I played with him a couple months ago and he like pulled out these P one X's and I was like, Whoa, dude, that's, that's kind of like, I'm not going to say it's a pricey disc, but it's yeah. definitely not a like, Oh, I'm going to find these at any shop I walk into no, right now. They, they, I mean, they are, they've got like, I have some, I have X lines cause the X line is the one that I stick in my, keep in my bag. Now that's my big, um, like backhand Anheuser, like one of like a flip up turnover kind of disc. Um, and I have, I bought a bunch of them. So I have a few backups. Um, but then I, I do have some D line and even the D line, like even beat up D lines are still selling for like, 25 30 bucks because people want them um the sign there's obviously the simon factor right like he threw i actually have two of the blue bar stamp ones that he threw for a while um and i just i've sat on them for a while but i've not i mean that's what i used to putt with so that that kind of brought the value up a little bit you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. so if you're a beaded putter guy going to links the world of micro (laughs) beat how's that it's it's not bad. Um, any it's I don't know what it is. I think it's I like any bead, right? I like big beads, smaller beads. Something about the bead is just a softer edge on my finger. So when I putt, I um I kind of sometimes I'll curl it under. Most of the time, I have my finger like out on the putter, so like my middle finger will be curling in underneath it a little bit, and that just feels good with the release. Yeah. Um, and then when I throw. I'm a, I guess I'm a power grip pretty much most of the time when I'm throwing approach, big shot. So when I throw my putters, I like it to be under, you know, not sharp. Um, but with mm. that being said, 
as we progress through, I, I have recently bagged a sensei and that's not a beater partner. So yeah, I was, we can honestly just jump right there uh, because <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the sensei personally. Um, yeah. Someone asked me what my favorite Dismania disc was. And I think I ended up on the sensei and then had to correct to the origin or not the origin. Yeah. to the origin. Cause I was mm. like, Oh, that's fair. Mm. It's definitely, yeah. I throw that way more. Um, but the sensei, what do you like about the sensei? So, I mean, you know, it's fairly new, uh, got it from a friend and just kind of tossed, threw it around. I was looking for, you know, the P3X is a little bit more overstable. So I was looking for a throwing putter that I can just throw essentially dead straight, right? Like a little bit of turnover, mm -hmm. um, but then rely on it and not just kind of keep turning or going to the right, uh, backhand. Um, and the sensei was, was that disc for me. Um, I actually, am I like third or third round playing with, I got an ACE at peaks you. So it was, it, it was fate just stayed in the bag. Um, and again, I'm sure as it beats in, it'll change obviously, but right now it's still fairly new. Um, so it's, it's what I throw off the tee if I'm looking for a straight shot or, or something like that. So, so what, what is making you choose a sensei off the tee versus your link that you throw? Um, so the link, oh, good question. Uh, just weird things in my brain. I, uh, the link I have found the links that I have in my bag are a little bit more beat in. So I'll sometimes try them off the tee, but they'll, they'll continue to turn to the right. Um, the sensei mm -hmm. is just that new, um, and the Lux, the Lux link, I don't throw very often cause I feel like it is a big, um, it's a little bit more overstable than I anticipated. So it's a lot of overlap with my P3X and mm -hmm. the P3X is going to win that battle every single time. Um, but yeah, something about the sensei it's shallow, where um sometimes with the beat it, disc can get a little thick so off the tee i do kind of like the the shallowness of it um but yeah again just kind of probably something just in my brain you know what i mean no no real <laughs> reason, well, I but. robbie talks about subconscious confidence all the time i think that's a comes comes into play there obviously you obviously feel more confident with the sensei to do what you wanted to do that straight with like a little bit of finish yeah so i mean that makes complete sense uh so Keeping the P3X vibe going, I want to talk about the tactics that are in the bag because yeah. technically, although they are mid ranges, yeah, I doubt yeah. you're throwing them like mid ranges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have the uh, the Razor Claw three, uh, just beef utility. Um, if I need a big like spike hyzer, like a shorter spike hyzer through the woods, a um, lot big scramble disc. Uh, obviously in the wind i'll use it but i mean it's beefy i love it um and then the extra soft tactic i've thrown i've never i i, I tried the hard when i first got it was not a fan of the hard tactic um yeah. love the soft I, I don't know what it is and then this is the these are the ones that were on sale in euro so the the like the extra soft euro ones before the like with the money with the uh with the european open stamp on them um, they're just gummy. They remind me a lot of jawbreaker zones when a jawbreaker zone beats in and you mm -hmm. get that waviness that, you know, um, but it still holds its flight somehow. And then it just sticks, sticks to the green. It doesn't roll very much um, where the uh, razor cloth three, I feel will sometimes skip or even roll a little bit. The extra mm -hmm. soft will just land and, and stay there. So now if I remember when I, this was, 2021 i want to say so the tactic i believe was fairly newer at that time when i was trying mm -hmm. them out end of 2020 start of 2021 um and i was looking at overstable approach this before the pig had truly ended up in the bag my top three were the tactic the pig and the a2 yeah i recently threw the a2 in comparison i don't know how i ever thought that those were the same <laughs> disc uh, because <laughs> i it was disgusting how overstable it was and in a great way for prodigy fans don't come after me uh yeah. <laughs> like put pitchforks down people but uh the tactic i remember because i know you mentioned the hard there was the hard and the soft originally because they hadn't come out with the premiums yet yeah yep, uh, yep. and i remember i th maybe i remember the softs were actually more overstable than the hards as well right 100 percent, and and that so apparently that reigns true with a lot of that um, that trilogy plastic. Like I know the soft justices are some of the more overstable justice runs. Um, 
it's funny how that works, but yeah, the soft that, and that, that's also what kind of lent me to it is, is that's what I was looking for a very, an overstable approach putter, um, or like super overstable and the hard just wasn't, wasn't doing it for me. So I got the, got the, the soft. And then when the extra soft came out, was super excited to try that. So, yeah. cause the P3X, was it in the bag already at that point? Yeah. P3X was in the bag at that point. And the P3X goes through like I have S line, C line glow. Um, I just love the glow plastic. So they kind of cycle through, um, but right now we're, we're rocking with the glow. So, okay. Yeah. So that would make sense looking for, or needing that extra overstable because semi overstable mm -hmm. already have you it. have, uh, yeah. there it's literally written. I think another fun feature, if you guys, uh, <laughs> I learned this when Gordon came in is Brad was like, Oh, Gordon has disc notes written down. And I was like, cool. Did he text them to you? Like, I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And no, and disc RBM, you can just, Put in notes right next to the discs. Who knew? Apparently, everyone in this call except for me. So, what a fun <laughs> time. But it really makes this quite handy. So, heading up to mid ranges. Yes, sir. Um, you've got quite a few in the bag and oh. our first diversion away from Dismania. Uh, yeah. And the only diversion. From yeah. Dismania. Dismania and Innova, I guess you can say, because yeah, the Innova. P1X. Yeah. Innova, but like Dismania made Innova, so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, verdicts. Yeah. What so about the verdict drew you in? It's 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 funny that I you know, I, and I think I was watching your last show, and you kind of said that like hipster. Uh, what'd you say? The hipster like um, vibe of like not wanting to go with the cool thing, right? Um, and I mean, I've tried the MD3 and the MD4, and just not a, not a big fan. And I know a lot of disc mania people are going to like shudder at that, but I'm not spending the, you know, at the time when I was getting into, you know, really building my mid range game, I wasn't spending three figure, you know, a hundred, 150, hundred bucks for a, a glow Eagle MD three, which is was apparently the best run. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, I found the rock three, but the verdict, uh, I was looking for an overstable mid, um, tried the md4 i tried to like it i really did and it just wasn't feel like it wasn't overstable enough for me and again maybe i was just going through some form things at the time and just wasn't releasing it correctly or whatever but um found the verdict uh from you know my friend john barker throws them and then ben you'll throws is a big dd uh was at the time throwing some dd mid ranges um and just fell in love with the verdict uh i don't know mm -hmm. what it is i i it's, a disc that feels really comfortable forehand for me. When I do throw a forehand, I can throw it backhand. Um, I love flat discs and verdicts mm. tended to be flat mm. with at least the runs that I like. So yeah, that one just, that stayed in and I have the fusion X. Um, and then I looked for the lucid X chameleon. There it was, it was a 2021 run from, um, Chris Clemens where they had the, the zombies, like the glow there, they were zombie faces on them. Um, yeah. and that one's just like super beefy. Mm -hmm. That one will come in the bag. If I know I'm playing a windy course or a long course where I need a beefy mid range. Um, so the fusion X is always in the bag. Um, but the lucid X chameleon kind of, again, cycles in and out when, when I need the, the beefy mid range. So, mm -hmm. so were these also the lucid X chameleons that had like, were, did you find flat ones? Cause I know for a while there <laughs> was the ones that had like a little center. spaceship top. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They do have, they do have a little bit, the, the, the blue ones I've found are a little bit flatter, but they okay. definitely do have, um, they definitely do have like this weird pop top right in the middle. Like, like you said, almost like a UFO. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I had one of the purple lucid chameleon, uh, ones mm -hmm. and I was like, I mean, it does what I want it to. It yeah. is so overstable. <laughs> and there are, there are certain runs that are, that are more flat than others. Um, and yeah, so this one is just luckily a one, luckily one of the more flat ones for me, but. Okay. So MD, do you have an old, go into the opposite side of the spectrum? Yeah. I feel like you got an MD, uh, D line MD. D -line, yeah. So this, this feels like a disc that has some stories behind it. Um, no, nah, I mean, you know, just it's, I've similar. So I, I kind of equate it to my P1X, right? My, my understable if i need an extra little bit of distance um it was those two discs probably kept me the p1x and the md probably kept me from learning a forehand for so long mm. um just because i didn't need it i didn't need a forehand approach because i knew i could throw 
a backhand, throw them flat, and it's gonna it's gonna follow that shorter uh, Anheuser line that a, that a forehand would for the Heiser. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean that's it's cycle. You know that that and not cycle, but like I've put in once it gets too beat in. Um, but honestly, it, when I'm looking at that and what I'm using it for, it really doesn't get too beat in. So um, I I had one that I gave away to a to a kid out on a course one time, and then this just kind of cycled through. Now again, these were. I knew when when the whole Innova thing happened with Discmania, and then now you know the um, now they're over in uh, Sweden, right? Yeah, so Sweden, um, they were stopping molding them, so I have a few backups of those as well. I, I try to, you know, I don't want to say I'm a hoarder, but kind of a hoarder because mm-hmm. discs I like, I want I want to be able to keep and throw for a while. So the yeah. the note on your MD one says just about any shot you need. Yeah, and that MD one, the uh, the mind bender. Mm-hmm. So I used to throw a luster MD. I'm a big, I I like to try to throw different plastics of the same mold. Um, So I have the D line MD and then I had the C line luster MD. Um, But then when the mind bender came out, I tried that and it, for some reason just like was more consistent than that luster MD for me. Um, I can throw it on backhands. It's going to Anheuser and then pan out a little bit. I can throw it on, you know, softer hyzers. It's going to follow that. Uh, so that 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 MD one is just I I love that disc. Yeah, any just about anything I can throw within like two fifty to three hundred, maybe even three fifty if I'm pushing it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it'll it'll move and it'll go. So, have you tried the Origin? I have. Um, when it first came out, I tried it, uh, and then again, it was just at the time it was, didn't beat my MD out of the bag. Um, so, I mean, I had it for a little bit and I've tried to throw cycle in and out, but, um, I've been, I've been fairly set on the MD. So I do, it does have a bead though. So I do like that. But so something I'm noticing, I mean, there's a couple things I noticed about your bag overall, but sticking with like kind of your mid range approach game, there is a very big gap between like your very neutral, you don't have if anyone's looking visually on the screen, you're going to see yeah, like yeah. the MD and the MD one are like on that very neutral, like zero line. And you don't really have anything past that on the right hand side. Uh, really to me, the origin is probably closer to like that one square, maybe like it's understable, but it does until you really beat it in a neoplastic, it does have a little finish to it. So is there a reason you choose to either go like extremely understable or extremely overstable and you don't really work anything in between in your mid range and approaches? Um, I no, no real reason. I think the, you know, so like looking at that, like with mid range, I would say the MD one is pretty close to that, but then the rock three at this point is kind of beat into that little bit of spot. So I would put that rock three, not at a three stability right now. It's, I mean the, you know, the two times and things like that are a little bit more overstable, um, but the the I have that beat into the point where it's probably that too. Um, but yeah, no, not not really. And I maybe I feel like I get that I get that shot or that slot depending on how I throw the disc. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, no real reason to to kind of lack that. You know what I mean? I, I think I starting out threw a lot of overstable discs. Um, mm. Just threw them threw them hard. You know, gripped them and ripped them. Um, yeah. And then that kind of stuck with me for a while. And then you know, again, learning to refine my game a little bit, tried some flip up things. So that's probably why I went a little bit more with the understable stuff to try and learn that flip up. Um, mm-hmm. So that could be, you know, thinking about that could be a reason as to why I kind of have that gap there. Um, yeah, because something we talk about a lot and it's something I, I'm just trying to decide what camp I live in because for a while I've lived in the camp of, okay, I need to like, basically my mid-range category grew from like one disc to like six and i'm really just trying to cover all of those shots and i'm trying to throw everything like relatively flat or my natural release is kind of a baby hyzer now so i'm like okay that's my go-to release now i need stuff like i'm going to use the disc to get the flight versus changing my angle because i'm just not like that skilled or that uh accurate yet with like altering my angles do you find since you are like a you've been playing a while, do you feel like you have better angle control? And maybe that's maybe why you don't need all of that coverage. Yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of, you know, learning to control the angle was something that I struggled with for a while. Um, but now I've gotten better at it. So I think that's kind of where, where I've landed now. I, I try to cover again, multiple, you know, same disc, but multiple uh, plastics. Um, mm-hmm. And that kind of helps me, you know, determine like, Hey, I'm, if I need really overstable, I'm gonna go with this one. 
really understable, going to go with this one and then just kind of, you know, turn my wrist a little bit and, and, or, you know, probably shouldn't do that form wise. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, either lean back or lean forward a little bit more to get a little more Anheuser or Heiser. So do so. you like, if you're, if you're like, Hey, I, this is definitely a mid range kind of a shot and I need like a pushing Heiser, but I don't need it to, to dump out. Are you like, okay, I'm going to get my rock three and I'm going to give it a little Anheuser or are you like, I'm going to grab my MD one and give it quite a bit of Heiser just to push. Probably the rock three. Uh, if I'm, if I'm looking for a straight, straight shot, probably the rock three, um, the MD one turns a little bit more. Um, and again, I could, yeah, like you said, could throw it on the baby hyzer, but, um, I think again, it just comes in that, that one comes in like the rock three has been in my bag for a long time. Um, probably one of the longer standing discs if I'm looking at it. Um, so yeah, probably just again, comfortability with the mold and, and you know, what I'm looking for. So yeah, I would say rock three on a flatter, flatter release. Okay. Mm. That makes sense. I'm just curious as I'm kind of starting from scratch almost from my mid ranges. So I'm just like, I'm just trying to decide where I want to land and I don't know there's yeah. a right or a wrong way. It's just like, you know, do I just become a big boy and like do some field work and get some angle control or do I continue on the path of like, let's just get a good form in general and then like, let's let the disc do the work for a minute. And then we'll get to angle control afterward. So there was, I always there like was, to ask. There was a time where I did not believe in field work. I thought I could go out on the course and just be like, I'm going to work on it while playing. And that that's going to do, that's going to work. And it made me angry. And I was like, you know what? Nope. I live right next to a field now. So I go out and throw in the field every from time to time. And that, that certainly helped. But yeah, it, it took me a while to get to field work. It took me a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. I, I look at this and I, I have a student, uh, his name's Wes, who uh, we we tried to work on a forehand for him. And I was like, OK, let's I want you to grab all the flippy stuff you have in your bag and I want you to take it out. I want you to throw them on hyzers. It's my typical like you're going to learn how to throw a forehand, throw a bunch of spike hyzers with forehands. And he was like, all right, cool. I'll grab all my flippy stuff and his flippy stuff. Yeah. quotations there uh was about where yours is like on the like the dead center neutral line and he was like no okay. it's all flippy and i was like in comparison to super overstable stuff yeah. yes this is flippy but this is not a naturally flippy disc so i can see brad what you're saying there in terms of like it's nice to say oh i want a disc to turn over this disc wants to turn over um <laughs> and so i'd be curious that old MD that you gave away, did it, f did you find that it was beating into that, like that old or that really flippy option for you? Yeah. And that, and that's it. That, that D line MD is like super flippy for me. Now, again, it's, it's, it's beat in. So it has gotten there. Um, but that's what I use it for. If I throw it flat, it's, if I throw it hard and flat, it's going to just turn and burn right away. Um, but if I throw it, it has to be a little bit more subtle and kind of touch shots for it. Um, and again, or not if, or I'm throwing it on hyzer and want, letting it flip up and even continue to turn if I need carry more distance with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think for me, it comes down to a, what your preferred release angle is, is where you land on that side of the coin, Brad, personally, mm -hmm. like if you like a little hyzer naturally, which like I live in that camp, hunters in that camp, uh, you're in that camp now that like having more understable stuff like an origin makes a lot of sense because then we can get that turn out of it without like, it's still a usefulness. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're more of a flat release person like Trevor, I'd imagine Trevor's bag is going to look a lot closer to this because of a natural flat mm -hmm. to natural any release. Yeah. Um, same thing when we have people come in now, like if we have people in our local shop, the diamond is a disc we recommend quite often. But if I were to say, hey, we have like a little throwing area now, I'm like, before we like start recommending a disc, if you're brand new, why don't you just go throw a couple times? So we hand them tech disc, they throw and it's like, oh, you have like naturally six degrees of Anheuser. I'm not going to recommend a diamond for you, even if mm -hmm. you throw so slow, because as soon as you start increasing that hand speed at all, that diamond is just going to be useless mm -hmm. kind of a deal. So I could see. I, I see that side of it. Um, if so, if you find yourself living in that camp, I would say, or you're questioning, ask yourself what, if I were to throw my ideal angles, what are they and record it? Because mm -hmm. there are times like, I think Brad for a long time had an Anheuser release and you were like, yeah, but I throw on Heiser and we were all like, 
no, you don't. Uh, like you throw on Andy, brother. Uh, and so then he plays in a video, and there it is. Like Anheuser releases. So we we can think we know our shot, but yeah. looking at it can be huge. Um, instincts. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's fun because you're like five, and then the instincts are living on their own island in the bag, right. yep. and then we just launch into the drivers. So. Fairway game is fairway game is is uh not not very big. The those two instincts kind of cover a lot for me. Um, the neo is again a beat in one, so a little bit more turny, uh, flippy. I used to throw a luster FD um, again as like a super understable. Uh, mm-hmm. I found it to be understable for me. Um, and then, but the instinct kind of again, I would find myself not getting consistent shots with the FD. So mm-hmm. I kind of, once the instinct came out, that was, that was it for me. And that again, one of those where I have, I think instinct is probably rivaling my rock three collection at this point. I have every, every mold and every plastic that they've come out with, with it, except for the Royal rage two. Um, don't have any Royal rage twos, but I didn't like it. So, um, but yeah, I throw the Neo and the Lux right now. Again, Neo is going to be flippier um, where the Lux is going to be going to live on that overstable side of it a little bit. So. Did they make any, were the instincts, any of the stones in the yes, new so box? Actually, the dark stone is a sea line instinct. Interesting. Um, so I'm very, very excited about a stiffer, um, mild dome, nothing too crazy. I actually have one down in a die bed right now in the garage. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I got, I got one of those. That, that was what I was very excited for. I got, I was excited for the P3X, this uh, mystery box run, and then the sea line instinct. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I like when they as as a geek, the idea of collecting the stones was incredible. Super cool. And I'm not even yeah. a dismaniac. Like I mm-hmm. I throw very little dismania and I'm with you. Like haters are gonna come at me, but I don't like the MD three at all. Yeah, um, I was not a fan. I found it to be inconsistent. I threw some S lines, I threw some C lines. I just for some reason didn't like it. And I I again at that point I'd had the rock three for so long and I heard everybody talk about the MD three. So I said, you know what, I'll try it. It just didn't kick the rock three out of the bag. And maybe it's that, you know, that one time, two time magic that, that I got with the rock threes. But it, I think the, my problem with it, cause I don't particularly like the MD three either. My problem with the MD three is the same problem I have with the meteor from Discraft. They just feel huge. Like mm, width wise. Not even not. I mean, they fit fine in my hand, but like width wise, they just seem gigantic. And I just, they just, they're. Un, I don't know. They just, it's probably subconscious. Like it's probably not really a, a huge difference. But I just, I pull one out. I'm like, this is a wide disc. I feel yeah, the same yeah. with a meteor. It doesn't fit well in my bag. It's like my other discs are like leaning into, it, and I just don't like that. Didn't know so I had that, my condor out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. If. You, it's not quite uh, Halo that Condor is coming yeah. soon. Don't you worry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we got it Halo is. Zephyrs, we're going to get Halo Condors. We're going to get Halo Makanis. Um, mm-hmm. And then one day when Dave Dunapace is no longer with us, we might get Halo picks. Yeah. Might. Uh, might. But we got to make more Halo. More. Ha- you're going to get Halo Zeros before you get. Uh, That's right. You probably will. Halo picks. Mm-hmm. I, I, if I were a betting man, I'd smash the uh, smash that bet all day. So, yeah. Uh, Speaking of old Dave, uh, continuing in the infinite world, yeah, you've got dynasties, which yes, what a cool disc! I I love it. So the dynasty was again, you know, I used to throw CD twos. Um, mm-hmm. The dynasty, to my knowledge, is the CD two mold essentially, um, and the the one that came out first was the S blend. So I have that, and that is super flippy. Um, I've played, so I, that's a, I, I treat the dynasty again, that nine speed. I treat that as like the, I mean, that is like the hybrid, right? So I'll throw that if I need like a further fairway throw, um, mm-hmm. or, you know, or a little bit, um, more overstable kind of shorter fairway throw. Um, but the S line, the S blend, the halo. So in order of overstability to let less stable, the halo is the most overstable, the glow C is brand new in the bag because I lost a metal flake color glow, which was a straight, uh, more straight shot. And then the S blend is flippy. So, okay. So the halo and the C blend kind of filling the same slot right now, only because mm-hmm. one's brand new. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, not the, uh, from what I found and maybe again, maybe it's just in my head. Right. But like the glow C is not as overstable as the halo. The halo is a little bit more domey. Um, so that kind of works into it to that advantage as well, where the C blend, the glow C is a little more flat. So. Yeah. Now when you're as someone who you, you have molds there, it seems like you've got a lot of comfort shots in the back yeah. because a lot of these discs have been in your bag for a long time. Uh, I think that's always fascinating because there are lots of players who like, I feel like Hunter and Trevor could do an in the bag every single month and it would be different, different. every yep. single month. And you'd be like, all right, cool. Connor, funny enough, I feel like is not really that way. Like no, his bag stays pretty true. And then there's like some fun new mold that works its way in. Uh, but like someone asked me to do an in the bag in 2023 and I was like, go watch my in the bag from 2022. It pretty much same. is the exact same. Uh, yeah. It feels like you're in a similar boat. So for this glow C blend, when you're trying to get it back to that state, what are you doing to get it back to that state? Anything special? Um, not really. Try. I mean, I try to just throw it. Um, I'll. I, I want to say like I like bend it right, but like when I take it out, I'll kind of like mo manipulate it in my hands a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, kind of mm -hmm. twist it a little bit. Um, and then mostly just try to force it to the shot that I want, which probably yields some bad results from time to time. But, uh, sometimes I will try to force that shot. Um, but just throw it, throw it to get it there. Sometimes if I'm doing practice rounds, I'll go out and just throw it a few times and on shots that I wouldn't normally throw it just so it hits the ground and kind of beats up a little bit more. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. Brad, how about you? If you had a, if you had Let's say your envy that's not an envy, you lost it and you're like, oh no, I gotta, I've got to replace this ASAP. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with the new one? Like to get it to where it needs to be. Yeah. Mm, that's tough. I mean, I'm probably just like taking it out on my next round. And I, I did this with um, another envy. I literally just, okay, hole one. All right, there's my normal shot, hole two. What's the nearest tree? Okay, I'm smashing it into that tree hole two what's the nearest tree smash it into that tree just try to get because i mean for that particular disc it is just so warped and disgusting and beat up that I, that torture is the only way to get it back to where it needs to be mm. now i am trying to replace discs in my bag that i do not have to do that to i don't want to have we call them the cryptid discs where it's just not even the same disc anymore basically i don't want to be that guy so but i mean i've been known to do that to a few envies yeah okay uh, and maybe I'm, an inner core or two just to get it like a little extra flippy. That's fair. Consistent flippy. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, I, I'm a big fan of the second shot method, like of I'm either going to go play a couple one disc rounds, like, cause I feel like drivers a little tougher for sure. Um, because mm -hmm. of that stiffness of the thickness of the rim and things like that. But I mean, you play three one disc rounds with just that dynasty. Yeah. And especially you go play, I, you could go play peak few shorts and yeah, it, like yeah. you're still going to be hitting things, especially in the back. Uh, Cause you got throw. So like, if you went aggressive on the back peaks view, you, you yeah, could still you, smash them, smash a lot of trees. You can so, hit some trees. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the other strategy. And this is the lazy strategy is like, I don't think I throw any molds that are super like rare or hard to find is like, Every once in a while, they just like roll in here into the use bin, and someone's already done the work for me. Which there you go. There I prefer go. I prefer that method, and that's why I do like the bash on trees method. I'm not patient <laughs> enough to be like, all right, so take me a month to season this in and get it where I want to. So I'm just going to go out and throw this disc a few times. Like I'm just not patient enough for that. A while ago, I heard like I, I've heard of all like I thought about that right. Like I've thought about what is something that you could enter like or invent in disc golf that would help or like a lot of things like I've heard people throw them in dryers. Right. And then yep. at one point I had heard there was someone that you could send your disc to and they'll, they'll beat it in for you and then send it back That's to you. Funny. Now, again, obviously you have a lot of trust in someone. Right. But, um, yeah. like, I, I don't like thinking of a way to beat in discs. Right. So like a machine that you could put it in that would just move it around or, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Just throw hey, it in a jugs to... machine and let it hit a tree or two few times, you know? Yeah. Gotta be careful putting that on the internet though. I, yeah. I I posted a video during Vlogmas uh talking about because I you talk about you love flat discs. I love flat yeah. discs as well. And so pigs, especially if you buy factory second pigs or the most domey pigs that come out, 
Yeah. And I don't like that dome on them. So I have a method that I use to de-dome pigs. Uh, and so I boil it and I like, I put it in hot water then I flip it upside down, put some weight on top of it and I leave it there for 12 hours. Uh, and the internet was not happy with me. I've, I've been, I've been known to do that sometimes to some of those verdicts I, we talked about earlier. I've done that. Um, and then some like fairways and, and drivers and things like that. But yeah, people don't like when you do that. People don't like manipulating discs like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, so I imagine if you were like, oh, I have this machine that beats in discs for you. People would be like, whoa, bro. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. PGA would love doing? it, yeah, but well, they'd we'll also the be a little here. upset. Pump the brakes here. Hot, hot take. What is the difference between doing that and me going out and intentionally hitting it a and deforming it against trees. You no. didn't put it on the internet. Okay, yeah, that's exactly. true. I yeah. just did. My bad. Yeah. If <laughs> if like that's the crazy thing to me, Brad, about this whole like when people are like, it's just not natural beating in a disc. All right. So you walk up, we both get on the tee box, and I grab this pig and I throw it on a forehand, and someone picks it up and tosses it to me later because I left it like behind. And they toss it to me. Are they gonna look at me and be like, hold on, wait a minute? And they flip it over and they look and they're like, this taste in it. This pig was, this pig was run in 2022, March. These were domey pigs. What <laughs> you what? dirty, oh, rotten you cheater. <laughs> you have removed the dome from this pig. <laughs> Disqualify this man. But then Brad walks up and he has this envy in his hands that is just warped to all get out. And I'm like, do you think that's how that came out? And they're like, no, man, that's natural. That's natural. Yeah. 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 We, I get that. we both modified the disc because we wanted a flight out of it. Uh, like this MD, a D line MD was never designed to be the flippy disc that Gordon has in his back, but it be like, it just it got there. It's fascinating, guys. It's you. fascinating. It's a it's for some reason some hill that I keep finding. I don't want to die on this hill, but I feel like there's a firing squad waiting at the side of the hill and I can't get <laughs> off of it. Like that's yeah. that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. What a time. Uh okay. FD three. Sorry. Little yeah. little rant there. You guys weren't ready hey, for a no, little no, ranty no. rant. Yeah, and then uh, FD three. Um oh. oh, go ahead. Oh no, you're good. I, I was just saying, like FD three the stamp looks sick on this. Yeah. Or so is this that is, a die? Again, one of the older mystery box runs, I think I want to say it was like 20, maybe 2019 um, when they had the Eagle and Simon like geometric faces on there. Um, 2019, 2020, maybe. Um, and that's a C line. That one, one that's kind of stayed out of the bag for a little bit. I had some color glow FD threes um, that I actually got from Hunter a little while back. Like when, when um, Hunter had some, got some from him and, and, that just kind of popped in the bag. Um, again, overstable, super overstable, more overstable than the Dynasty. Um, so just use that for and a big forehand disc for me. I, again, I live on the, I, I learned to throw my forehand with overstable discs, which is not the right way to do it. Um, so I've tried to throw in some instincts and things like that. But uh, the FT3 is one of my big over uh, forehand discs. So. And then the FD3 and the PD are very similar, just a little bump up in speed. What keeps um, all three of those discs in the bag for you? As far as FD3 and PD kind of being similar, uh, like I said, I don't really throw the FD3, I would say, on full power. So when I'm looking for a more, like a further shot, so probably, I mean, I guess, you know, probably 350 and plus if I'm looking to kind of get out or on some bigger hyzers. Um, I'll throw that the glow PD, like the, um, the dark mall two super flat board, flat beefy. Um, and then the dark mall one I have found at this point is kind of beat in. So it'll fly straight for a while with a, with a pretty reliable finish. Um, that one, that one's come into the bag fair. Like that one I got in one of like a, I belong to some disc mania pages. So I do a secret Santa and that one I got in a secret Santa and I never knew what the hype was with the Dark Mall one. And now now I know a hundred percent that when it gets beat in, it is gorgeous. A little bit of turn, slightest bit, but never gonna turn over. Um, and then just flies straight for days. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. And then we're jumping up the drivers. And then we're there. Yeah. And then we're there. So uh, yeah, obviously have a, a DD3. I mean, I feel like any disc mania person that's that plays 
regularly yeah. like dd3 is yeah. probably going to be in their bag of some variety yeah now you do have a cloudbreaker one and yep. then a, a new c line so Brand obviously line, yeah. yeah i'm going to guess you're probably like okay my dd through my cloudbreaker one's awesome it's probably getting flippy and i need something that like has some stability if i had to guess so honestly l- reverse it so the, the cloud breaker really? one is still a little bit overstable for me. Um, so I would say the newer C line is a little bit flippier for me. Um, if I want to try and get big, big distance, I'm probably throwing the C line um, just because I can flip it up a little bit more. Um, but if I'm looking for control and uh, placement, the, the cloud breaker again, just because it's, you know, I, it's been in my bag for so long, I'm comfortable with it. Um, Whereas that C line now that C line may get to that point, but I'm not there just yet. But yeah, the, the cloud breaker one, um, is just been, that's been in my bag since it came out. I got that from Mike Kemp when he, you know, he's a retailer. So I got that from him and it, I lost it for a while. I lost it at Sandusky playing, uh, playing Safari one day. And then Kenny Palmer actually pulled it out of the lake at Venhorst for me. Um, and I wow. got it back. Yeah. It's funny how that happens, right? With my number, Still on the back. Yeah. yeah. But. Hey, public service announcement here. If there's a disc that has a name on it, just call. in number, just call or go to your local store. They probably know the person or can yep. have a lost and found. So please be a good human. It usually works out for you. Just be a good human. I'm and still, I'm still a believer that not even living in the state that someone is going to, someone's going to squid the whole one at uh, independence one day and I'm getting a call and I'm getting that destroyer back. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. It'll be here. Kenny will do it. He brings them by about once a year. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, it. I went, I went waiting for it. Cause that was, you know, again, that was a big, big disc in my bag. So when I lost, I was upset and I went waiting for it. I, I swam and looked to try and find it. Somebody else found it and I got it back eventually though. So, uh, die on the DD three air temple or just swirls. Just a Triskele swirl, um, okay. not necessarily Air Temple. Is that from Avatar: The Last Airbender, though? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to say that because I love that show. So now I'm going to say that. Uh, but yeah, just a just like an old fashioned Irish Tris- Irish Triskele. So I love it. Okay, so last disc that we haven't talked about yeah. feels like a pretty straightforward option: the PD two beefcake. Mm-hmm. When I need yeah. the beef. Um, when I, it, windy, if I need a super, you know, just, just when I need a super overstable disc, that that's what I'm reaching for. Um, mainly utility and mainly only comes out when I need wind. Um, I got, I don't have the largest of fingers. So like 12 speed and, and like, for some reason, DD three feels a little bit different. I know it's the same speed. DD three just fits in my hand a little bit better. Um, so the PD two is really wide, but I, I don't, I will never throw like a 13 speed or, or higher just because I, I don't like the way it fits in my hand. So, yeah. So final question for me before we jump into the disc, Brad, uh, unless you have another one as well is I'm thinking of when you first said, okay, so I throw 300, 350 on a controlled backhand. Yeah. Yeah. 150, 200 for a forehand. So thinking of shot shapes there in my mind, are you right-handed? Yeah. So you've got a hole that is like 300 feet, but moves to the right pretty much the whole time. What are you throwing there? I'm right. try- I was trying to think of like a specific example that y'all have moves to the right. Probably Halo my dynasty. S blend dynasty. Okay. Oh, that's, blend. that's close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'll probably, and maybe even that glow C blend, um, after I get a little bit more comfortable with it, throw that on a little Annie and let it kind of flatten out. Um, okay. where the S blend, I would probably either do a flip up and continue to carry or throw it flat and then just continue to carry depending on the severity of the dog leg. So, okay, cool, cool, cool. That, that was my thought is when I initially looked at the numbers and I didn't see show or disc notes, I was like, I don't know how this man is getting to the right. Uh, that is so tough. Uh, but no, that makes a ton of sense. Painful, with the painfully, one. painfully getting uh, there. But hopefully we have an option here. Brad, you tried two discs. I did. Yeah. I don't know that these are the right discs. I think one of them has potential to be. Okay. I, I'll be honest. I After I looked at the bag, I expected you to throw like 500 feet, Gordon. So, <laughs> so I was... 
I, controlled. I mean, I can throw. I can throw far. I can. I can throw five hundred feet. But controlled, I would say probably three fifty. You know what I mean? So, okay. I mean, I can thinking you know, here, you know how i know you can throw far is because you're humble about how far you can throw that's how i know you can throw far mm. Um, mm. yeah 350 controlled yeah and that tells yeah. me someone knows how far 350 really is it's, it's a long ways guys it's a long ways yeah, yeah okay all right well then maybe i feel a little bit better after that statement okay so i tried to diss out because you did share one thing with me gordon you said hey i am trying to work on the distance on my forehand yeah so I thought, well, Gordon's played a lot longer. His form's probably immensely better than mine. But I like throwing the lift. That's like my main forehand disc. I get the most distance out of it. But the theory behind it is it's, it's just flippy enough that I, I'm a uh, high as a release on my forehand. It's just flippy enough that I can get to flip up and go straight and push before it finishes. It still has a good overstable finish to it because it is technically, I mean, it's stable. So it does have a good overstable finish, but... I, I can also chop a little Anheuser, like a little Anheuser on it, and I can get it to come back to straight probably. Um, or I can put a lot of Heiser on it. It's not just going to dump on me. I can still get the push. So I try to go into this with a, the same theory for you, but just maybe with like a, a bigger arm or someone who has like better form. So have you thrown the paradigm? The paradigm? Is that from? Yeah, no, I have not. Okay. I threw the enigma for a little while, mm -hmm. um, but I have not thrown the paradigm yet. Okay, so Paradigm, I threw the Paradigm, and I threw the Mystere from Innova. Ooh, okay. Halo Mystere. Um, so I picked these specific discs for, uh, and I, this is a little more tactical than we usually do. Usually it's like, hey, like, let's just throw like these two and these type of plastics. So this um, Primal Run, I believe, and I might be making this up, I believe I heard it's flippier. For me, it was like very, it was pretty straight when I threw it on backhand. Okay. Um, with it with a, a decent finish on it, um, but I initially picked up the Enigma and I was like, "This is not the right disc," and I don't know why I was just feeling it. I remember yeah. this had like maybe a little more flip, but still had the overstable finish that you're going to want. And I figured if we're talking with forehand, it needs to be kind of flat or remotely yeah, flat. Yeah. And you see the profile on this one. I mean, Ooh, yeah, my camera, yeah. it's like pretty flat. These this particular run is. I don't know. I can't speak for the other ones. Um, so I, and I knew your disc mania guy, so I'm like, let's try the paradigm. Yeah. And then with a mystere, um, it just, it feels really good. Every time I pick it up, it just feels really good. It's an 11 speed and a six glide negative two, two, um, the paradigm, I'm actually have to look up cause I forgot what the paradigm is. Um, but anyway, I, I wanted that same kind of like feel that my lift gives me, but yeah. in like a flat, a faster, a little um, bit further. Yeah. Yeah. The paradigm's 12, six, negative 1.52. Okay. So again, has a little bit of turn, but doesn't, it, it's still going to, it's almost guaranteed to fade for you at the end. Um, so we usually go on a feel test, a feel test. So like in the hand, on, honestly, the mystere feels better for me in my hand. Uh, the mystere is definitely a little flatter for that like good forehand feel i feel like i can tuck it way back in my hand which i like mm -hmm. not that i can't with the paradigm the paradigm just has like a little bit of a bevel that just again it's it's fine but i do notice it whereas the mystere just kind of smoothly fits all the way back in my hand which is kind of nice so um feel as far as what wins on the field the, the halo mystere wins on the field test for me um so that's where we're on feel, Robbie. What are you what are you thinking on the field test? What do you want to ask me for Gordon's sake? Yeah, on the field test. Uh, yeah, not the field, the field. Yeah. Tricky, tricky yeah. for the audio listeners. Honestly, for yeah. all listeners, unless you got subtitles on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say so you're you're used to the lift, highs your release. How flat could you, because I'm looking at the discs that Gordon has in his bag for forehand right now, predominantly mm -hmm. all over stable discs. Yeah. So I would assume that you're not necessarily too often throwing some pure hyzer forehands just because like those would be really, those they would just not go anywhere. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a lot of flat and hyzer releases. So for these two discs, Brad, we, I want to hear how they flew like on your typical release mm -hmm. and then how flat could you get them before they started like having a little too much movement to the left. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I could go Anheuser on both of them and not have to worry about them turning and burning or anything. 
Um, okay. Again, and I, I think my and Robbie, you've seen my forehand enough, and you call me out if this is wrong. I think. I can safely get my forehand out to 250. I'm very comfortable there, maybe even on a good day a little farther. Controlled 250, though. Do you feel like that's accurate, yeah, Robbie, or shorter absolutely. than that? Yeah. So, yeah, even with like that power, um, I'm focusing more on like a smooth release. I'm not like crow hopping and just chucking it. I'm just like kind of taking like a gentle step and like making sure my elbow's tucked and just trying to smooth it out. Um, but yeah, on my like normal highs release, I do with a lift. When I lift, like, like I said, will pop, like flip up. No, I can't get either one of these to flip up with my forehand. Um, now flat, I could get them to carry pretty straight. And none of them would, st- neither one of them would turn with like a true flat release. Now an Anheuser, um, I will say that I'm really just trying to think about all the shots I threw, but because really like giving a little bit of Anheuser, it almost didn't want to take a little bit. I had to give it like a little extra. But, like I mean, I'm talking like okay, here's flat. I'm talking about like maybe right here. Like mm. not quite axe chop, but like halfway there. And I could get both of them to like turn a little bit and they would both come back. I would say the Mystere probably gave me the most S like flight mm. versus the Paradigm. The Paradigm, even if I gave it Anheuser, would hit the, it would take that input and then like kind of want to immediately correct back into the, the right. Whereas the Halo Mystere would kind of give me that nice big S. Which I did throw the Halo Mystere farther every time I threw it. Backhand, forehand, it did not matter. Just for whatever reason. Again, it is an 11 speed. And that it, there's something to say about that. Because it is closer to my arm speed. Therefore, I'm going to throw farther. I feel comfortable with 11 speed. For whatever reason, getting up to that 12 speed mark. Forehand doesn't bother me as far as feel. But like I really can tell my arm speed like when I jump above that 11 speed mark. For whatever reason. You said that the Paradigm's a 12, right? Correct. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the yeah, paradigm I glow. also thought was a joke when it first came out because mm-hmm. that point in the middle of the turn is so small for some reason on the stamp that they have for that disc. Mm-hmm. And 15. so I saw it and I was like negative 15 turn because I I'm pretty mm-hmm. I think it came out around like April Fool's Day too. So it was it like did, yeah. Oh, so they're just joking. Like, mm-hmm. this is going to be the flippiest disc ever. Ha! Ah. And then it was well, like... They have the tilt and the paradigm. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I truly thought that's what we were trying to yeah. go for. And then it was, yeah. oh, no, it just... There's a point there. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. a normal frisbee with a cool name. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I had to do a little shift myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Brad, which which of these discs would you say wins out in your mind? I think the Mystere, and I know you're a Disc Mania guy, but I think the Mystere does because... I also like to recommend discs. I don't like a one use disc per se. Yeah, yeah. I will say the Mystere, like I started throwing it on some backhands because I'm like, I need to know what these are, how stable these actually are. Because again, me throwing a forehand with a disc is makes them seem a lot more overstable than they like probably actually are uh, just for my like form and release. But I threw both of them and like the six glide is no joke on this Mystere. Like it is no joke. Okay. So if you're maybe even needing a longer dynasty, yeah, I think yeah, a Mystere yeah. probably can jump up and fill that role and give you something that you can start working on the smooth out forehand and even embrace your Anheuser a little bit or flat to Anheuser and uh, get some more distance with your... I'd be surprised if you can't push out like 250 with a Mystere. I will I will have to try that out for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I, think I played around with a Mystere years ago at Commonwealth Games. They had them in the players pack. It was a champion. I think it had just come out. Um, and played around with it just a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, I love the hate, like the feel of the halo plastic. So I will definitely have to try that, try out the halo mysterious. Yeah. And that's some of it too. Like it's just, it feels a little gummier. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this paradigm at all. It just, the mysterious definitely just wins in like a lot of categories for sure. Yeah. And Hey, there's nothing wrong with trying some new plastic. You nothing already throw no. some in event. Anyway. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. Well, Gordon, we appreciate you coming on, man. If the people want to find you and your awesome dies, where can they find you? Uh, So find me at Rad Dad Dies on Instagram. Um, I try to stay fairly active on like the Facebook Dyers page, the Dyers Guild page, things like that. Um, But yeah, Rad Dad Dies at Instagram. You can check out some of my work at the Foundation Shop, uh, also online sometimes as well. Um, And I'll be giving them another... uh, box of discs here in a little while to all died up so keep a look out there 
And then also check out uh, Jets Therapy on YouTube. It's the uh, if you like the New York Jets, if you like football, we we talk all things Jets. And you know, it's a sad, sad, sad world being a Jets fan sometimes. But it's nice to have some people to talk it out with and and hang out. So awesome, man. Well, yeah. hey, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate all you do for Foundation and hey, the local scene too, Gordon. Battle for Bedford, if you ever heard of it, that's yes, Gordon. Yes. So uh, we appreciate you, Gordon. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Hey, guys, thank you again for having me. And uh was a blast. Brad, it's fun. The more we do this, I mean, 56 episodes in uh, at least. And we are we are moving and grooving. Uh, I think one of my favorite moments that happened in that episode is just the synergy that we have. And uh, he talked about his... I'm trying to remember what disc it was. It was... Uh, his when he, at, he talked about his sensei uh-huh. and I had like put him on the road to ask. So you have the sensei, but you also have a link that looks like it mm-hmm. does the exact same thing. Yeah. And then when he finished his statement on that and you were like, so why do you choose that over the, it was yeah. phenomenal, dude. It was good stuff. We're getting there after 56 episodes, you start to vibe a little. Yeah. 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 So, uh, very much enjoy that. Gordon was a great listen. I will be a hundred percent honest and I'm, I don't know if he'll hear this in post or not. Like, I wonder how many people ever go back, guess we have, and listen to their episode. I personally, if I didn't make YouTube content, don't know that I could listen to myself for like a whole episode. That's a lot of me True. Uh, and my voice. Uh, but I will be real. Gordon did not look anything like I thought he was going to look. Really? I thought he was going to be this like, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say, I thought he was going to be this like 250 pound dad like looking like 50 year old man here you go because when i hear rad dad dies i'm like okay like he wears a skull cap probably yeah yeah like he is he is very much hanging on to youth uh mm-hmm. but gordon looked like a very cool individual uh, He's a cool and dude. was a pleasure pleasure a pleasant chat and hey, if you're a 250 pound dad that wears a skull cap, you're cool too. Yeah, we yeah. Like yeah. Too. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> nobody, nobody's trying to the, the throw. A I just literally, you were like, the more you talked about it, because we've talked about Gordon for a few weeks trying to get him on, um, and I just had this image in my head, and he did not fit that image at all. Uh, so. Mm. Super great. Speaking of great things, uh, we want to thank the sponsor of What's New in the Warehouse, which is Heiser Disc Racks. Uh, They, guys, I can't tell you how beautiful they are. They've been in my house for a couple weeks now, and my wife has never been happier with how the basement looks because things are either in a box or on a rack. Like, we don't have discs just floating around anymore, which is her dream. Yeah, and I say this all the time, but like, one of my favorite things about disc golf is like a youth section or like people's collections, be able to like leaf through them. I come from the, the youth of growing up with like Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh and magic cards and like all the collectibles and all the versions of everything. It's just fun to like look at the collection. I love the doing the same for mine and yeah, keeping it organized on a piece of furniture, not just like a piece of random metal, a piece of furniture that's going to last um, is just a great way to go. So thank you, Heiser Disc Racks for that. Link will be in the description. Make sure you check them out. Right now they have some like their version of factory seconds right now that are still beautiful pieces yeah. of great furniture. I mean, this is the quality that they like uphold, but they, you can barely tell there's anything wrong with them, but he just does not want to send them out. Maybe there's like an, a weird knot in the wood or something like that. But if you're wanting to get a hold of them, you're like, Hey, maybe the budget's a little tight, but that might make them very affordable for you. And trust me, it is worth the investment. It is an investment. They are not cheap, but sometimes you buy once and you make sure that it's going to last you for a long time and that's one of those products so and thank modular. you Heiser distracts like you yep. you truly can i'm like asking one questions time. myself of when i get more it's not an if when i get more because i like i don't know why i would want to store my discs on anything else uh for mm-hmm. display and things like that i'm like ooh, am i gonna go five because i know where my next set is going and i'm like i could probably go five high instead of four mm-hmm. high uh yep. and it would still be fantastic so it's so beautiful and the knots i love when people yeah, have a piece of wood that has like a beautiful like knot in it that you got to work around things like that so mm. i might request for my next one like i don't mean, like i know that they're factory seconds to you but <laughs> for the us. more knots the better i am yeah. here for it absolutely so yeah thank you guys for actually check them out in the description below and hey when you're after you get your highs rack you're gonna need to fill it up and we're gonna fill it up with what's new 
in the warehouse at foundationdisc.com. So, hey, this time of year, there's not a whole lot of disc dropping going around. So let's just be honest. Yeah. However, we got some fire hitting. Um, if you're listening to this, there are um, some uh, Discraft Factory Store exclusives that are going up. So we have some like Get Sneaky Vultures and, G- and Z Jawbreaker, which, hello, those are amazing. Uh, Connor on. gave me one for our disc swap here at the office for Christmas. And uh, I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. Um, we, there's some uh, Brody um, Metallic Roaches, which are bro- one of Brody's favorite approach discs. He loves that run. Uh, Brody Roach Putters. We have uh, Dark Horse Nuco S's, Avenger, ESP Avenger SS's, Brody Avenger, I'm sorry, uh, ESP Buzzes. We also have some Yuli stamp stuff. We have uh, Yuli's Crystal Zone and Yuli Crystal Raptors. We also have some Nukes Baby Mini Nukes and mm. uh, some Mini Get Freakies and some Mini Proto Lunas. Um, so those are all going to be going up. We're continually getting all the uh, Innova and MVP uh, up on the site. So the new molds are going up all the time on those. So make sure you check that out. Um, yeah, and we're also going to be putting up some other distri- uh, Discraft Factory Store stuff. I don't know if it'll be up for this Friday, but it'll definitely be up for next Friday. Come on. Come and hey, on. if you haven't gotten the um, subscription box... It's now's so the, good. Now's the time to jump on. Robbie did his unboxing. We sent his out um, last week, or this week, actually. And uh, solid box, right, Robbie? I So... I just go ahead. I'm I'm taking over right now, guys, because here's the deal. This box was so good. So good. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to I'm going to keep this completely unbiased here. You have the F7, which is a disc very similar. I think people hear the F7 and they think it's going to be like a roller automatically. Mm-hmm. But my understanding of the F7 is that it's very close to a Sting and an It and things mm-hmm. like that. Like it is flippy but not unusable. And they have these mm-hmm. rivets. Like Lindsay saw this F7, and Lindsay is not the person to throw an F7. And she just about just pulled it and put it straight in her bag because it has this beautiful little holiday frog on it. It says Hoppy Holidays. So good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I had a Zone OS, so I went like flippy, other end of the spectrum, but I had this beautiful, swirly, like Z, uh, not Z line, X line. Is that what they're called? It- I think it's swirly, like soft putter blend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, it was, it was this, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. It has this graffiti Discraft stamp on it. I mean, if Discraft doesn't sell that shirt, fools. Like, mm-hmm. I think they could easily have just like, pick your pro, put their logo here, and then Discraft on the back, make them made to order. People should buy those like crazy. So already mm-hmm. the sick there. And then... Here's where the unbiased part comes in. I dislike the Leopard 3 with a passion. Uh, Like I am so, it just doesn't work for me. This Leopard 3 is one of the most beautiful Halo discs with one of the coolest custom foundation stamps I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, because y'all have made a lot of custom stamps with the foundation logo. And literally, I looked at this Leopard 3 and was like, am I a Leopard 3 guy? Like this disc is so beautiful that I literally, I could be flipped. Yeah, so, that, that may be what's uh, replacing my Jackalope spoilers. Yeah, that makes sense. Like a Halo Leopard 3, going to have some stability to it while also not being so overstable as well. That's mm-hmm. phenomenal choice. Yeah. So, and, and there's a swag so, item in there. Swag and, items are, uh, and hey, there's a little Christmas card from us. It's, it's a good box. Great box. Make sure you jump on. Hey, it's not too late to ask for that for Christmas when you're hearing this. It sure. won't get. It may not get to you by Christmas, but it's the gift that keeps on giving, like the Jelly of the Month Club, right? Yeah. Hi. Great gift, Clark. Great yeah. gift. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we. I just want to say, have a merry Christmas to everybody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Have a. Uh, we will see you all after Christmas, and uh, we're just very grateful for all of you. Thank you for all the support that you give us, and uh, that's never that never leaves our mind. We're very grateful. So. Hope you all have the best, best Christmas that you can possibly have. And, uh, you know, if you're uh, at Christmas, you're by the Christmas tree and you get a circular shaped little present, you unwrap it and you're like, hey, this is great. Where's it going, Robbie? Hi. It's going straight in the back. We'll see you all next week. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.